In this video, we will look at angles, which are part of the bigger topic of plane geometry. By definition, angles are geometric shapes formed when two rays or straight lines meet at a common end point called the vertex. As shown in the diagram below, you can see the two rays or lines meeting or merging at a single point called the vertex. So we call the measure in between the two arms an angle. We have different types of angles. We have an acute angle, which is an angle that measures less than 90 degrees, as shown in the example. Then we have an obtuse angle, which measures between 90 degrees and 180. So it is greater than 90, but less than 180 degrees. Then we have reflex angles, which measure between 180 and 360 degrees. Then we have a straight angle, which is exactly 180 degrees, or it measures on a straight line. Two rotation angles measure 360 degrees. So we start from one point and then we move in a circle back to the same point we started from. Now this is similar to a zero degree angle because it doesn't move from its point. How do we measure angles? We use a device or instrument called a protractor. So a protractor has a central point, an inner scale, and then an outer scale. Both scales can be used to measure angles. Now this is how we do it. In the example, we will see how we can use a protractor to measure the angle between these two arms. A, B, and then B, C. So we will place a protractor onto this angle by merging the central points with the vertex of this angle and also the zero point on the outer scale with the line B, C. And then we will read from the outer scale in an anticlockwise direction. And then we will align the second arm B, A with a point on the outer scale. In this case, it measures exactly 40 degrees. So the angle between the arms A, B, and B, C is 40 degrees using the outer scale. What are adjacent angles? They are angles that are nearby or share the same common arm. So in this example, angle BQR is adjacent to angle RQS because they share one common arm and vertex. In this example, we can see an example of adjacent angles. So angles one and four share common line one, angles one and two share common line two, angles two and three share common line one, then angles three and four share common line. So we have four pairs of adjacent angles in this example. With supplementary angles, they add up to 180 degrees. So in this example, angles one and two sum up to 180, one and four sum up to 180, four, three sum up to 180, and then three and two sum up to 180 degrees. Opposite angles are also congruent and measure the same angle. So in this example, angles one and three are congruent or are the same. Then angles four and two are vertically opposite. Parallel lines are lines which have the same distance between them when you stretch or extend the lines to infinity. So they never meet. So in this example, line AB is parallel to line CD. Now with this example too, we have line PS parallel to line QR and then line QP parallel to line RS. Now note that in this parallelogram, we have the sides with the same number of arrows are parallel. So PS has one arrow and QR has one arrow, while QP has two arrows and then RS has two arrows. Perpendicular lines are lines that have a measure of 90 degrees between them. So in this example, we have these two rays, AB being perpendicular to DD. And in this rectangle, we have the line segment PS perpendicular to PQ and then SR. And we also have QR being perpendicular to PQ and then SR. Sometimes when straight lines intersect, they form special angles between themselves. So in this section, we will look at a line cutting through two parallel lines. Now the line that cuts through the two parallel lines is called a transversal, which creates these types of angles, vertically opposite angles, corresponding angles, alternate interior angles, alternate exterior angles, co-interior angles, and then co-exterior angles. We'll look at all these one after the other. By definition, a transversal is a line that crosses at least two other lines. So in these two examples, line one crosses line two and three, so we can call it a transversal. Similarly, line four crosses lines five and six, so it is also a transversal. Line five is not a transversal because 
at only one line, which is line four. Similarly, line six is not a transversal because it also cuts through only one line, line four. Now we will look at the angles between intersecting lines. First, we will have vertically opposite angles. These angles are congruent or the same and share an intersecting point. So in this diagram, angles one and three, which share a single point of intersection and are congruent are vertically opposite angles. Now going back to our reference diagram with the transversal, we see that there are four pairs of vertically opposite angles, one and three, two and four, five and seven, and then six and eight. Now what about corresponding angles? Corresponding angles are also congruent or the same. However, they do not share a common point of intersection, but occupy the same relative positions at the two points of intersection when a transversal crosses two parallel lines. So in this example, angle one and angle five are in the same relative position, so they are corresponding. Let's go back to our transversal example. In this example, we have one and five, which share the same relative position as being congruent, four and eight as well, seven, three, and then six and two as outlined on the left here. Going back to the same transversal diagram, we can identify two types of angles, interior and exterior angles. Now, the interior angles are the angles which are in between the two parallel lines. So angles three, four, five, six are all interior angles. And exterior angles are the ones which are outside the two parallel lines. So one and two and seven and eight are all exterior angles. Now, what are alternate interior angles? They are congruent angles which are inside the two parallel lines, but lie on opposite sides of the transversal. Usually they form the Z shape, as you can see in the blue line, and also an S shape, as you see in the orange line. Now let's see an example of alternate interior angles. So there are two of them which lie inside the two parallel lines, so three and five, and then four and six will qualify as alternate interior angles because they lie on the opposite side of the transversal. With alternate exterior angles, they are also congruent, but they lie on the outside of the two parallel lines, not inside, and are also on opposite sides of the transversal. Let's see an example by referring to our earlier diagram. So again, they are congruent or the same, and they lie on opposite sides of the transversal, and they are also outside this interior angle, or outside the two parallel lines. So we have one, and then seven, and then two, and eight. What about co-interior angles? These lie on the same side of the transversal and are supplementary or add up to 180 degrees. Let's see an example by referring to our earlier diagram. So in this diagram, we have four and five as being co-interior, and then three and six as also being co-interior. With co-exterior angles, they also lie on the same side as the transversal, but they are not congruent. Rather, they are supplementary or add up to 180 degrees. Referring to our earlier diagram, we see that angles 1 and 8 and then 2 and 7 are both co-exterior. 